Come with us, Out of Bounds, as we discuss and debate the latest topics in the world of sports. We have a great show ahead, so let's get to it. Hello and welcome to the Out of Bounds Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Harrison. I hope all is well with everyone out there in Out of Bounds Nation during this time. Today, I have a great show lined up with a great special guest. Curtis Kelly, host of the Culture of Marudas podcast, will join me today to discuss his background in podcasting. Also, topics will include the 2008 and 2010 NBA Finals between the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers. Curtis will also have to explain to me why he loves Kevin Garnett. So with that out the way, I'd like to introduce our guest to the show. He is the host of the popular podcast, Coach Marooters. He is a loving father, devoted husband. He served the country for 20 years as an Air Force vet. His music interest includes a love for English rock band, Led Zeppelin, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and a taste for 90s hip hop and R&B. To sum it all up, just an all around fun guy like Kawhi. <laughs> Out of Bounds Nation, please help me welcome Mr. Curtis Kelly to the show. Curtis, how you doing today, man? I'm chilling, man. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm glad that we had the opportunity to, to finally um, do this. Uh, you know, we talked about it in, on Facebook a, a little bit, and I'm glad that we're finally able to actually do it now. Um, yeah. So how you been holding up, like, during this time? You know, su- surprisingly for me, man, like, you know, for most people, they're like, oh, it sucks. I can't get out. Just, you know, I- I'm good. Like, you know, and I, and I talked to my wife about this and I've talked to a couple of other folks, you know, with me coming from a military background and deployments and stuff, it's just like being on deployment, but I have everything that I need and can want here. So I'm not really tripping on it. It's, it's good. I get to uh, kind of take a step back from like the hustle and bustle and grind of like everyday life and kind of just chill and enjoy family time, man, and, and do things that I normally don't get to do during the week and on the weekends. Like, like before we got on, like, I was cleaning my garage. Like, I've been in my house for, like, almost a year, and I got boxes and shit still piled up everywhere. So, you know, my wife was doing gardening. I was taking care of the garage. So it's nice. I've been spending my time doing, like, constructive stuff like that. Okay. So could you tell everyone where you're from and how long have you lived there? Cool. So originally, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. That's right. I'm a brother from Omaha, Nebraska. The only other one that most people probably know of is Malcolm X. So, uh yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. I'm a military brat, right? So um, I'm 40 years old. So I've been bouncing around probably for 38 years of my life. Um, my father, my father um, was in the military, so you know he bounced around. I bounced around with him up until I was 18, and then I went straight into the military from there. And then uh, just retired. Uh, shoot, next week will be one year. Um, one year ago, next week. So. Um, my last duty station was up in New Jersey at Fort Dix, uh, South Jersey. And then, uh, yeah, I'm down here in Tampa, Florida now, man. Loving loving the weather. I wish we could get out at the beach, but that's another story. So, yeah. Yeah. So you kind of, like, moved around, since, you know, because of the military. Right. Right, right, right. Definitely. Uh, so the military. Uh, go ahead. Oh, no. Yeah, it was funny you was um, saying about um, the reference about Omaha. I, that's the first thing I thought about was Malcolm X when you said that. <laughs> That's what most people think about when, when when you tell them like there's a brother from from Nebraska, like nobody's from Lincoln unless you play for like you know U of N or you know just having just a like Lincoln. But most black folks you'll find, yeah, they're from Omaha and more specifically like North Omaha. So it's uh it's yeah it is what it is. I haven't been back in years, man. But um you know that's 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 home. So so how was it out there with the restrictions and you know you did reference a little bit about you know being in at home but like what are the um the restrictions um that your state as far as like the mandates and stuff like that as, as far as the um coronavirus thing right. going so, on yeah so governor DeSantis down here in uh, florida um he he hasn't really put like an official like lockdown uh, or curfew or anything out but um you know it's still like a basically like stay at home type of order uh, all the schools and everything are out. There's still like the uh, central spots, like all the bars and everything are still selling like booze to go. Like my sister shot me a, 
shot me a text earlier. She lives out in a Treasure Island, like South, uh, like St. Pete area. And um, shot me a text saying like all the bars and, and, and breweries are still serving booze. So, I mean, restaurants are still rocking um, with a lot of to-go stuff, like most places I, I imagine. And then you have like, um, you know, grocery stores and stuff like that. And it's just weird, man. It's, um, I was kind of bummed out. Like I went yesterday to, uh, to uh, Winn-Dixie to get some groceries and get some food. And I was in there, man. It was almost like a ghost town. And then like the people that were in there, like nobody wanted to get next to each other, you know, understandably so. But, you know, it's just, it's just weird, man. And now they got these glass partitions up. So, you know, the, the uh, customer service reps and the, and the cashiers don't get sneezed on and stuff like that. So it's just wild, man. It's just kind of a, kind of a bummer, but you know, it's just, I understand the safety precautions and the measures, but at least we don't got those jackasses down on the beach anymore, man. So that was like the big problem over spring break. So. Yeah. I saw um, a video surface and they still was having like some kind of spring break weekend out there in <laughs> Florida and things like that. It was crazy. It wasn't some kind of spring break. It was full on. Like they were full on partying and rocking. Like, like it wasn't even like a thing. So, you know, it was, it was full on spring break. And then they try to like soften the blow and like, you know, kind of cushion it by like, oh yeah, we're going to shut it down first thing Monday morning. Well, hell, spring break's over by then. So you ain't doing nobody any favors. And then they had the nerve like a week later to me, oh, you know, uh, five or six people that came from there, they caught it. Yeah, no shit. You know, you should have been at home in the first place. So crazy. Yeah, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. So yeah, my wife has sent me to the grocery store, you know, for the first time because she never sends me to the grocery store. I went to go get some bread. And I walked in, you know, and it's hard for me to navigate through the grocery store without without her. She's my like my compass. And I'm walking around the store, you know, all the shelves are bare. People got on masks. They got the the POS terminal has these little plastic bags over them. It was just a weird scene. I've just never seen. I'm 33 years old. I've never seen nothing like this before in my life. Yeah, yeah, and you know. I, you know, I've been buying newspapers, taking pictures and stuff, man, because I mean, this is, this is a, this could be, you know, world changing. Like this is not just affecting one, you know, lane or, or one thing in particular, this is going to affect how we do day-to-day business from here on out. Like, um, the, uh, the big, the big boss, man, the, uh, the doctor, uh, I think his name was Fau- Fauci, Fauci or whatever. Yes. He was talking about like, we're going to be doing away with like handshakes. And that's crazy to think, man, like something that you've done, basically like a form of respect where you look somebody in their eyes and you shake their hand. Like that may be, that may become a thing of the past, you know? So it's just, um, yes, yeah, it's, it's about to change, man. It's about to get real interesting here once we get a handle on how this, uh, how this disease or this virus is, is really working. And it's kind of funny with the handshake gesture that you referenced, like even before this had been going on, I was always mindful about shaking people's hands uh-huh. because of, you know, just, how you know things are being transferred and things like that i've always looked into you know different things like that and and so it wouldn't be that uncomfortable to me because i always do a fist bump every time you know i meet someone new or something like that they have their hand shaking that i don't mean no disrespect by it right, right, right. but it's just the fact that i don't know what you know your hands have been doing before that interaction <laughs> And I just know you, you know, just being a man, you just know that we all got all kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, man. And, you know, they, some folks, they ain't the cleanest motherfuckers out in the world, man. So it's right, like, right. <laughs> you know, so, but my sister, man, me and my sister came with the thing. She said she's hitting them with the Mr. Spock, like the live long and prosper with the little hand gesture. Right, yeah. She's hitting them with that. So, um, and I was like, hey, I, you ain't got to touch nobody. Hey, live long and prosper and keep it moving. So I, I definitely feel you on that because, uh, you know, you'll come up to some people, you be like, hey, you just kind of either hit them with the elbow or the fist bump right, or right. The head nod or whatever. But, I mean, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an adjustment like a lot of things are going to be. And um, I think that's where the challenge is going to be because, you know, you got people traditionalists. You got people who, who, who still can't even keep their ass in the home. So how are you going to change like a whole culture of, of you know, greeting and, and, and stuff like that? You know, that's going to be tough, man. So we'll see how it goes. But I, I, I'm not opposed to it. But it's just going to take a little bit of getting used to, like most things. Yeah, just like most things, is, you know, you have to do, make some adjustments. And then you have to think, like, they're putting this, the, the preventative measures out there. Because you, you think about it, like, people are losing their lives behind this, this oh, yeah. virus. And because we don't know exactly how to stop it and, or how it's being transferred and stuff like that. So, I mean, at least they're, they're in front of it right now. And, you know, hopefully, you know, we're able to figure out better ways to combat it in the future. Right. 